The big investment opportunity on the continent remains infrastructure, from roads, rail, ports, renewable energy, and more importantly, basic energy. You get various off-take agreements or agreements that are, are with the governments uh, and have certain take-or-pay type principles in it, so it gives the, the private equiteer a lower risk profile on that, although infrastructure is a high um, cost of entry. But it's not all plain sailing. I'm not going to pull any punches. The continent and usually the regulatory issues that one faces, it takes a bit more time. Uh, it's sometimes a bit more costly to build things in those, in those uh, uh, countries. So one must have a bit of patience as well, but the returns at the end of the day could be good as well. Meanwhile, in South Africa, black economic empowerment is making its presence felt in this asset class. There has been substantial growth in BEE, facilitated by private equity. Whenever a private equity house goes in and does a deal, it takes with it a BEE partner. And the BEE partner doesn't have to do the due diligence. Uh, the finance is invariably raised already or in place and put together by the PE house. The due diligences are done, the legal framework, the pricing and everything. So they are piggybacking off that. The South African government has been increasing its exposure to this asset class and there may be some upside that should appeal to other governments. There's a huge amount of developmental benefits for government. Private equity yields invariably a higher growth, a higher uh, level of employment, a higher capital expenditure, a higher R&D compared to its listed compatriots. I think government has identified this and thrown some money at it. Infrastructure still remains the big play on the continent and that includes the uh, private equity funds that are looking to get involved in South Africa and continentally. I'm Angelo Coppola for CCTV in Johannesburg.